First, though, throughout her childhood, Shai Keenan was horrifically abused by her stepfather and his paedophile friends. It wasn't until 40 years later that she made the brave decision to bring the men who abused her to justice. Having launched a very public campaign against paedophiles, Shai now dedicates her time to running a victim support group called Phoenix Survivors. This is Shai's courageous story. For most of us, childhood was a carefree time full of joy and discovery. But for others, this could not be further from the truth. And that's why today I meet a wonderful woman who decided to turn the tables on the sexual predators who abused her throughout her childhood. Shai Keenan was born Karen Wooten in 1963 in Birkenhead. Four years after her birth, and with two sisters in tow, her mother took Shy and ran away from her father to London to be with Stanley Claridge, a man she had just met, who swiftly adopted the young girls after marrying her mother. Then the years of sexual abuse began. Stanley started sexually abusing me and my sisters from when I was pretty much immediately we moved in, so approximately about three, four. And it wasn't really very much long after that he started selling us to his friends who would sexually abuse us and photograph us and film us and do terrible things to us with his knowledge. And, in fact, his consent. And, and he would sell us for cigarettes and, and alcohol and, and that went on till I was about 14 years old. It stopped... I mean, I stopped letting abuse happen to me when I was about 14, I think. And it took a long time for me to, to figure out that not everyone in the whole wide world lived exactly the same, because we didn't get that kind of exposure to all those other families to let you know. Sometimes she ended up in hospital, bruised, battered and riddled with sexually transmitted diseases, and no one asked any questions, not even her own mother. The weird part about that was that everybody knew. I, I wasn't, I'm, I'm not like most of the cases, you know, you, you know when nobody told and, you know, I, I waited until I was much older. I, I told my head off. I told her my mouth practically fell off. I told my mum. She didn't believe me. She beat me within an inch of my life and never spoke to me again. I told my dad. He believed me and then killed himself. I told what I thought was a social worker. She didn't believe me. She thought it was my fault it was happening. And after a while, I didn't want to tell anymore. By the age of 14, when her mother died, Shai was too disturbed to lead a functional life. She was institutionalised for bad behaviour and endured more sexual abuse at the hands of various children homes officials who were meant to be helping her. I had gotten to a point in my life where I, I couldn't understand how to stop it. I thought that good, decent men came by me and I turned them into paedophiles. I was the cause of paedophilia. That's what I believed and I just... I'd lost everything and I was desperate and I took myself to the top of a block of flats with every intention of flinging myself off it. But for some reason I just, in the end, decided to throw Karen off of it. You know, the girl that ever, ever puts up with an inch of it. Just throw her off and the person who comes down won't have it no more, just will not have it. Eventually, at the age of 17, Shy escaped into adulthood. Then, in 2000, she made the brave decision to face her nightmares head-on and bring Stanley Claridge and his paedophile ring to justice. Shy went to the BBC Newsnight team and asked them to tell her story. They asked me if I would try to get all of the information on a videotape, and I asked them what they meant by that, and they said, well, you go and see him and put all the secret cameras all over your clothes and, and go and talk to him directly. And I thought, well, yes, I will, but are you sure you want me to? Um, and, and they went, why, why are you frightened he'll attack you? I went, no, mate, I'm frightened I'll kill him. Are you kidding me? You're going to put me in a room with him while I'm a grown-up? He opened that door after all those years, after everything he'd done, after all those people he'd hurt, and he opened the door to me like nothing had ever happened. Went in, was filming him, and he, he did exactly what I'd hoped he'd do, completely t disclosed on himself, grasped himself up, grasped some of his friends up. Sometimes she used to come to me, and I just go to her. Right. 
November 2000, BBC Newsnight aired their groundbreaking 60-minute special called A Family Affair. Having collected enough evidence to prosecute Stanley Claridge and his paedophile ring, who were still preying on local children some 40 years after Shiner's sister had become his victims. In the days after the film was aired, more and more of Stanley's victims started to come forward, and slowly but surely, the police started building a case against him that resulted in a 15-year prison sentence. When we got to court, there were so many victims from so many different generations, all the way down to two-year-old. And then when he got sentenced, he's like, well, do I leave now? No, you're going to jail. And at that point, it would have dawned on him, that would have been at 82, the first time anyone in his life ever said, Stanley, you did it and you were wrong. Today, Shy runs the Phoenix Survivors Advocate Group, where she monitors the internet for stories about paedophiles and offers support to victims and their families through a 24-hour helpline and internet service. Phoenix Survivors was set up in the wake of Operation Phoenix, which was launched as a result of the Newsnight documentary. There were many victims there that, you know, had found the courage to tell. And there were lots of questions that needed to be asked, lots of things, the help they needed that just wasn't available anywhere. But we just, there was no help available. At the moment, we've got hundreds of people on our books. If we were able to give all the people we want to help the help they needed, we'd have thousands of people on, uh, on our books. So what we're trying to do is make it so that we can come back with enough help for everyone. In our community of Phoenixes, I'm one of millions like me. I'm not special at all. In fact, I'm typical. Most of the Phoenixes that I rub alongside are amazing, wonderful human beings. And one of those wonderful people is Sarah Payne, whose eight-year-old daughter Sarah was murdered by paedophile Roy Whiting the same year the film was aired. Sarah, who campaigned for Sarah's law, naming and exposing paedophiles in the community, has now worked closely with Shy for the last five years. Shy and I conference every day. We go through um, all of the news stories for that day and we see what positive things that we can do. Uh, we also then go through our emails and there'll be families that have contacted us, victims that have contacted us, um, and basically we advocate for them on their behalf. She is great. There is no doubt about it. She has survived the worst. Um, and she still bursts into flame every now and again and survives all over again. She is a true phoenix. I love that that horrible stuff he did to me is now used to stop other people. And I love that all of those times when I cried on my own and wished there was people coming to help me, that, that really happens now. That really does happen. It's not just a dream in a kid's mind. I love that if someone calls out for help, we'll come. We will come and we will help. Wow. Well, for further information on Shire's story and her book, plus details of helplines, you can have a look at our website, itv.com slash thismorning, or indeed give us a ring. And Sarah Payne is here tomorrow to reveal why she has been commended for her great work. Wow, what a story. You can't believe that she was let down so badly by so many people. No, but I suppose 40 years ago, mm. people weren't prepared to listen. But if you are actually watching the programme now and sitting there with a secret that you feel it's time to tell, then, uh, then call our phone-in room in complete confidence and maybe they'll help you, point you in the right direction. Never let anyone get away with something uh, like that. No, never. Competition time now. <laughs>